And joining us right now to weigh in, Republican Congressman Sean Duffy of Wisconsin. Congressman, so it's a pleasure to see you. Thanks for joining us. What do you make of these escalating war of words? Well, first we have to look uh, back, Maria, and the passivity that came from the last administrations hasn't worked to keep um, North Korea in a box. Um, they've continued to advance their armaments. They now have nuclear weapons. They're working on intercontinental ballistic missiles, and they're a direct threat to, to the United States of America. I think it, it's appropriate for Donald Trump to be crystal clear with North Korea what's going to happen uh, if they continue to escalate, which is they're going to meet fire and fury. That is, uh, that is, that is. <laughs> True statement, and I'm I'm happy the president's putting that out there to make sure everyone understands what we are going to do um, if they continue with their bad acts. But does the president need the authority from Congress to do anything uh, to, to to take this up a notch in terms of military? Not not at all. Okay. No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, if uh, the president's talking as the as uh, the chief executive, what the United States will do if this continues to ramp up with North Korea. But if, if we have to take a step back, and I know the left is freaking out about these comments, but the left's approach of just kind of wringing your hands and wetting your bed um, hasn't done anything to get North Korea to stand down. Um, this is this is a time for tough leadership. This is a time to, to meet a bully on the playground with crystal clear facts and say, listen, um, if you if you mess with us, you are going to get punched really, really hard uh, and you'll probably get wiped out. Yeah. What did you um, say earlier? Let's you try a new it, approach. Let, let, let's not diplomacy our way uh, into this. What did you call yeah, it? Yeah, we're, we're, we're diplomating our way into yeah, yeah. Good for you. Uh, in North Korea, just like we are in Iran. Congressman, I mean, it's not even just leftists. It's establishment Republicans that 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 have decried these, right. the president's words after so much, uh, fr frankly, uh, appeasement that's led us to this. You know, but back in your district, this is a big question, I think, as it pertains to conflict. Conflict requires, eventually, the support of the American people. Do folks in Wisconsin or Minnesota or elsewhere understand what, why this is so important, and would they back a strong action, knowing that there are no great military options there, there are going to be consequences, whether we like it or not, but a nuclear-tipped uh, North Korea that can affect us is just not sustainable. Will, would the people back it? Well, right now, I tell you, people's hair are not on fire, you know, back here in Wisconsin or in my district. Uh, they trust the president. Um, and they do understand this concept of, of peace through strength. Um, that if you, wanna, if you want us to, if you want to take us further away from armed conflict, you show uh, American resolve and American strength. They get that. They saw it with Ronald Reagan. They're seeing it with Trump. Um, so, no, they haven't left the president. They will support strong action. But I think, Pete, you and I are on the same page, I hope. Um, responding to North Korea militarily is a last option. Um, we, w we want to exhaust every opportunity out there to resolve this peacefully. Um, and I think what's happening now is that, nor that China is seeing how serious this is and how this is escalating, and they better get off the sidelines and get, in get into the in engagement between the United States and North Korea and say, we've got to help uh, calm the waters. Otherwise, uh, this could go really bad, not just for North Korea, but for us, too, in China. The Wall Street Journal editorial page points out today that the language coming out of the Trump administration is not just directed at the Kim regime. It's directed at China. Right. And it, so uh, some comments aren't going to change the behavior of China. China could cut off the flow of oil going into North Korea. It is a lot that it could do. But expect to see more and more sanctions on Chinese companies, on financial institutions called secondary sanctions, on any institution in China doing business with North Korea. That is another lever that, that they've only begun to kind of pull down on in the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. Isn't right. Kim Jong-un's narrative in North Korea all about his own power? What is going to be his incentive to say to his people, this is too grave of a threat, I'm going to have to drop all of this stuff that I've been spending my entire life and my father's life trying to work toward. I don't think he cares what the people say. And it's not going to be sanctions. Whether we, what, if we can say, I, don't, I don't believe we economically sanction our way to denuclearization in North Korea. It doesn't mean I'm pro-conflict, but let's be clear-eyed about this. We've tried it and tried it again, and history has never shown that a dictator who's tied to, his survival is tied to nuclear weapons, gives them up. But right. they did work. And the lesson is Gaddafi, and he died in a ditch. Mm -hmm. So these dictators look at that, and they realize, I've got a choice. We want to turn to the president. Well, you do give him a pathway yeah, out, don't you? I, mean, do, 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 oh, I was going to say, Marie, you, you, you want to give him a path.
way out uh, from nuclear armaments to, you know, re-engaging with the rest of the world. And when we increase the pain, not only militarily, but with, with China sanctions, um, and if, if you cut off the flow of trade between North Korea and China, um, th that is extreme pressure. That could bring them back to the table and rethink their course of action. Is this one more issue in front of the Congress uh, that's getting in the way of the president's agenda? I want to talk about the president's agenda in Congress because the president is pushing back this morning against his own party Senate leader, Mitch McConnell, who, of course, as you know, suggested earlier in the week that the president's lack of political experience is the reason that he expects uh, that, that he has too high of expectations uh, that uh, they're they're saying we, we may not be able to deliver. Listen to this, Congressman. Got to get your reaction. Part of the reason I think that the storyline is that we haven't done much is because in part, the president and others have set these early timelines about things need to be done by a certain point. Now, our new president had, of course, not been in this line of work before, and I think had excessive expectations about how quickly things happen. I mean, is he kidding me? President Trump tweeted out this morning, can you believe that Mitch McConnell, who has screamed repeal and replace for seven years, couldn't get it done, most, must repeal and replace Obamacare? Congressman Duffy, could this spat potentially put the rest of the president's legislative agenda in jeopardy? And how does Mitch McConnell sit there and say that when you guys have been talking about repealing and replacing for seven years? Yeah, let, let, let's be clear, Maria. The, the agenda and the timeline has been set by the Congress, not by President Trump. I mean, President Trump uh, was elected, as we've already been talking about repeal and replace. We've been talking about tax reform, and we've been talking about the timeline in which we could get that done. Uh, you're right, the president doesn't have much legislative experience. He had none coming into the White House, so he looked at the Congress for guidance on what you can get done and by when. Um, this isn't the president's fault. Um, this sits squarely within the Senate and their inability to pass a health care bill and, frankly, many other bills that, have brought to them, that we brought to them through the House. So uh, the, I think the president's right here, and he should push back. You know. But well, I, but, is it just, that, is it just that these I mean, guys this, really, this, at the end of the day, Congressman, is it just that they really don't care if he succeeds or not? They're just not on President Trump's agenda. They don't really care. They're in the job for six years. They don't have an election like you guys have in the House next year. So they're going to take their sweet time because they want to outlive the president. Well, listen, th 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 this, is, this is not the president's agenda. This is the American agenda. This is the Republican agenda. This is the Congress's agenda. This is Mitch McConnell's agenda. Well, they say that, um, so this but, isn't but, about but. thwarting. This isn't thwarting the president. This is us saying this to the American people. It's senators across the spectrum that are, re that are Republicans and House members said, I promise you, you, you give us the House, the Senate, and the White House, we're going to repeal Obamacare. We're going to get tax reform done. They right, made the promise I know that. over I know that. and so over how come again. Not doing it? I know. Well, the, what so happened the, with John the, McCain? I'm not a senator. How come John McCain yes, voted I, the way I, I he don't voted? know. I, listen, I, 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 I've been in Congress for, you know, six, seven years. I can't figure out the Senate, Maria. I don't know why they can't get their act together. They have much mar narrower margins than we do. Um, but I can tell you what, I bet they're going home right now, and they are getting lit up. Every, yeah. every senator across the spectrum is getting lit up, um, not just by uh, Democrats, but by Republicans. And but I think on these votes, when, they, when you have what, six work. or eight of them. They're at work. You're yeah, calling them. Six, <laughs> Maria, six, or, six, at, or, six or eight of them. Six or eight of them who voted uh, no on a straight repeal, uh -huh. they were afraid of Democrats. They should be afraid of Republicans. You've seen a lot of these guys now getting primary challenges yeah. right. because their base is so angry at them, right. and rightfully so.